Hi guys. So today we're going to start into our southern colonies now and the first one we're going to be looking at is Maryland. So again I want you to think like with all the other colonies we've been looking at I want you to think about how are these southern, col southern colonies going to be alike or different from the colonies that we've studied from the middle region and from the New England region. Again they have characteristics and similarities and differences that um, make them that are going to make them similar or different from the other colonies, okay? And think about what made people want to live there or not want to live there, okay? So we're gonna look at Maryland first. And it's always kind of funny because Maryland tends to be characterized as more of a northeastern state. However, because we only had 13 colonies, um, it actually was classified as part of, as one of the southernmost colonies at that time. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so Maryland, even though it's more of a northeastern state, it actually was more of a southern colony, okay? It started the region of southern colonies, okay? So Maryland, we're going to start up here. Cecilius Calvert started the southern colony of Maryland in 1634 for two main reasons. First, Calvert hoped to make money. Second, he wanted to provide a safe place for Catholics to practice their religion. In England and in some other colonies, Catholics, like Calvert, were harshly treated by non-Catholics and the British government. So they wanted to get away from being treated so badly, so they formed Maryland as a way for them to escape that harsh or that treatment by others. Maryland's geography and climate were perfectly suited for growing and selling tobacco. Tobacco plants grew well in the hot, steamy summers. Chesapeake Bay split the colony in half and provided a route to the sea. Tobacco farmers near the bay could easily ship their crops to Britain and other places. Unfortunately, the climate also encouraged mosquitoes that spread disease. Okay, so you can see again, there's some pluses and there's some minuses to living in Maryland, but um, it worked great for selling that tobacco. And we learned in our previous readings that tobacco was considered a cash crop, so it was a big thing for them. Okay, um, the next paragraph. There were many job opportunities in Maryland. Most colonists there worked for small farms. They grew tobacco, corn, wheat, and fruit trees. Other colonists were involved in lumbering, shipping, fishing, and raising cattle for beef and milk. Mm. Some bought and sold slaves. So there you can see another example where we have we talk about the different, there's a wide variety of jobs available and um, lots of opportunities for the people who are living in Maryland. Over here in this painting, this painting is called The Founding of Maryland by Emanuel Lutz. shows the importance of religion to the Catholics who settled there in Maryland. And you can even see there's some Native Americans there in this picture. So you can only imagine how, again, we've got people that were trying to spread their religion. Maybe they're trying to spread it to the Native Americans. You never know. Remember, that was one of the reasons why a lot of explorers came to the New World, because they wanted to spread their religion. So maybe that's happening here in this picture. Okay? All right. For our next paragraphs. Let me adjust the camera here for one second. Adjust, adjust. And here we go. Okay. So families who grew tobacco on large plantations, they became rich. However, most of the work on the plantations was done by African slaves and indentured servants. So there again, we've got that topic of indentured slaves and Africa, or I'm sorry, indentured servants and African slaves, um, how they're helping out on the larger plantations. And planta plantations were mostly a characteristic of the South. Okay, and again, this is one of our southern colonies. Participation, um, let me move just a little bit more. There we go. Participation in Maryland's government was limited. At first, Calvert himself was in charge of the Maryland's government. But in 1638, Calvert permitted the colony to have an assembly. Generally, white men with property, they were the ones that could vote for members of the assembly. As more non-Catholics moved to the colony, Calvert convinced the assembly to pass a law that protected the Catholics' right to vote and to serve in their government. So you can see, over time, the government changed in, um, in Maryland. That at first, it was just Calvert that basically was in charge of their government, but then over time, it changed where it allowed others to participate as well. Okay, so again, think about how Maryland is similar and different to some of the other colonies that we've talked about so far. Um, and think about what were some good things about living in Maryland and, you know, some not so good things. Okay, all right, thanks.